Hello, my name's Patrice Lawrence. Thank you very much for joining me on my Empathy Lab book. For the last year or so, I've been wearing mostly black trainers. Well, actually, one pair of black trainers, and then another pair of black trainers, and the first pair of black trainers got worn out. So I'd like to introduce you to my new boots. These are the boots that I use to do my empathy walk. And they're different from my normal trainer, so I've got a different way of walking. I'm taller, I'm clumpier, I'm aware of every step. So I want to take you on a short walk. I come out of my house. And what I realise, of course, is that the world has shrunk for all of us. I've moved to a new neighbourhood by the seaside. So in the last year, I've got to know that better. I also have found that my eyesight's got worse and my hearing's got worse. So I've been very conscious of the senses that I've taken for granted for so long. So I try and look a little bit harder and I try and listen a little bit harder. So I come out of my house. The first thing I can see is the sea. Anyone who lives by the sea, no, it's too simple to say that the sea is blue. Often it's many colors and some of those colors can be blue. Today, it's kind of silver and grey with lots of little, little ripples and a kind of line across the horizon. I can see a container ship and I think about what's in it and also who sails in it and what happened in the last year during a pandemic. Did it affect people's livelihoods? Did people feel stranded on the sea? Did they feel separate from their families or did they feel safer? I also think as well about the people who travel by boat across the sea to safety. There's a port not far from here where um, a boatload of people seeking refuge landed. And of course, as in many of these cases, it split people's opinion. And I think, what must we be leaving to set sail on a small boat to cross a deep sea to a place that we've never been before? I think in the last year, I think about how at the beginning of lockdown, people must fault each other because they thought they might not be able to get toilet paper for their families. So imagine if we had a tougher life. So that's when I see the sea, I think of many things. I also hear birdsong. There's a particular bush that's just past my house that's full of invisible residents who are singing really, really loudly. I love their birdsong, but it also makes me think about a conversation I had with someone about whether or not they should get a cat, because they said if they get a cat, that might affect the, birds, the bird life where they live. So again, I think about those decisions we make for ourselves, the decisions we make that are probably not what we want, but that actually might be better for other people. I also see um, a road clothes sign, and I think about all the sort of cones and obstacles on the pavement and on the road, and how, if you're used to sort of negotiating a kind of familiar territory, perhaps if you uh, have lost some of your sight, um, what that must mean to suddenly have those obstacles there. And it makes me think again about how I take for granted about what I can see, about the ease that I move around and how those changes must impact on other people. So even in my new boots, as I walk very carefully trying to get to, used to those new steps, I think about how the world is designed for me. As I walk, I'm looking down, not just to make sure I don't trip over, because that is always a possibility, but I've been, I'm looking at weeds. I've been researching wildflowers, wildflowers for a recent book, and it just made me think about who decides what's a weed, and who decides what's a flower, who decides what's disposable, who decides what's valued. At the moment, dandelions are everywhere, but we often ignore them. But they're this massive splash of yellow and orange wherever we walk at the moment. And if you look up uh, dandelions, they're edible, they're a herbal remedy, and they're tough and they're persistent and they push their roots into tiny spaces. And again, it makes you think about the people that survive on the edges, the people that we don't see, even though they're very much there, who are trying to survive, trying to push their roots down, trying to, to exist. I'm walking down a hill, it's a steep hill. And as I walk down it, I always think I've got to come back up this hill. Halfway down the hill, I pass a bench. A woman's sitting there and she's surrounded in shopping bags. It's a steep uphill journey. Have I mentioned that before? It's a steep uphill journey. And even when carrying extra weight, um, it just reminds me how tough the world can be for, for, for people 
for whom the world isn't designed. But I think it's very thoughtful to put that bench there. Um, and also there are people who put bowls of water along the, um, down the hill for, for thirsty dogs to have a little sip on their way. And again, I think that's kind and empathetic. I passed the children's playground. When I first arrived here, it was locked. I mean, literally locked with a, pain, with a, a chain and padlock. But now it's full of toddlers and families and it's a haven for teenagers as well. And then finally, I reached my destination. It's a secondhand bookshop and it's only just reopened. And I hook on my mask and I get ready to open that door and to enter new worlds. Thank you for coming on my walk with me. Hello, my name's Jane Porter and I'm a picture book author and illustrator and I've just been on an empathy walk. I went with my friend Sarah. When we walk, we normally talk to each other about things we're worried about and we listen to each other and a lot of empathising goes on between us. But what we don't normally do so much of is look out for clues about how other people might be feeling. There weren't very many people about at first, but I spotted lots of lost things. A bag shaped like a gingerbread man, a backpack, and then there was a poster on a lamppost asking if anybody had seen a lost brown coat that had great sentimental value. So I thought about how the people that had lost those things must be feeling. Then I saw a sign on somebody's door saying, knock quietly, baby sleeping, and it made me think about the experience of having a new baby. And then I spotted some cardboard dinosaurs that children had made in somebody's window, and I thought about all the hard work that had gone into putting those together. One of the first things that happened on the walk was that we bumped into my friend Maggie, who looked very, very tired. And the reason she was tired was because she'd been looking after her grandchildren. A little while after that, I saw some beautiful pavement chalk drawings that had obviously been done by little children. And when I saw those, they made me feel really happy because I could just tell what fun the children had had drawing on that pavement. We were in our local park by now and we wandered through and there were lots of people, even though it was quite cold, there were lots of people out enjoying meeting up with each other and there were children playing football and there was really a sense that everybody was happy to be out and together again. Almost everywhere we looked there was a bright fuzz of green as leaves were coming out on the trees and cow parsley springing up and that just made us both feel quite optimistic. As we passed a group of trees, I could see some teenagers sitting in a lovely, quiet little spot, listening to music and chatting. And I thought about how they probably feel quite happy to see each other again, but also possibly throwing yourself back into social life after all this time is not easy for everyone. We stood on a bridge and looked down into the River Wandle where a tree had fallen in and caught lots of rubbish in its branches and I thought about how that was going to affect the wildlife. Normally I go to the River Wandle cleanups and help get that rubbish out and we haven't been able to do that for a long, long time and I hope that everybody hasn't been too lonely. In my story, The Boy Who Loved Everyone, there's a beautiful illustration by Maisie Paradise Shearing. The main character, Dimitri, is walking home from school with his mum and he sees an old man sitting on a bench and you can just tell from the expression on his face that he's really thinking very hard about how the man is feeling. One of the things that really cheered me up all through lockdown was when I went on walks and I found people had left little messages and signs. There are all sorts of examples of that. People drawing hearts in chalk or leaving little luggage tags tied to trees with optimistic messages on. So when I was asked to think of what my empathy resolution might be, I wondered if a good one might be to start leaving some of those things myself for other people to find. So I hope you enjoy going on your own empathy walk just finding out a little bit more about what other people might be thinking and feeling. Good luck!
Hi, I'm Manjeet Mann and I'm the author of two YA verse novels, Run Rebel and The Crossing, that you can see behind me. Now, it's Empathy Day and Empathy Day aims to help everyone understand and experience and, and share the feelings of another through stories and using books um, to step into someone else's shoes. So we have been asked to go on an empathy walk. So today um, I stepped out of my front door and I went on a walk and this is the map that I drew. Um, so yeah, so I decided to go on a walk to the beach. So um, I saw quite a few things um, on my way. And as I walked um, down my street, um, and before you get to the harbour, um, I heard a lot of shouting coming from one of the, the flats um, that I walk under and um, I felt quite scared at first and really worried for the people inside and I also just felt really sad as well um, for the person who was being yelled at and I wondered if there were any children inside um so i just stopped and and waited for a little while just in case it sort of escalated and i just wondered you know do i need to call the police um but it seemed to quieten down so you know i did carry on and i walked past a uh, um car park and um I saw a young woman huddled up um, in a sleeping bag on the floor and I couldn't help but just feel so so sad and just really worried for this poor woman and you know I was wondering whether she'd been there all night because we'd had a really really stormy night last night you know it was thunder and lightning the works and it was just really cold and I felt so worried for her um, and I could tell that she was really shivering um, so actually on this corner here there's um, a coffee shop so I actually went in there and um, I bought her a hot sandwich and a cup of tea and then I went back um, and I gave her the food and the tea and we had a, a little chat um, yeah and I just really I gave her the number actually of um, uh, a homeless um, a charity in, in, in my hometown um, so that she could uh, so that she could contact them on her phone and so I really hope that you know tonight she won't be sleeping in the car park um I then carried on up the street and um into the harbour and over the bridge um, and when I was on the bridge um I saw this um small girl um and she'd fallen off her scooter and she just burst into tears and her knee was really grazed um just clearly in a lot of pain and i just remember being that age and oh gosh and how i would always fall over and just the pain of a grazed knee um i could definitely empathize with her and i felt i felt so so sorry for her um but luckily she had somebody there with her who sort of picked her up and gave her a hug and um sat her down and you know um they started sort of cleaning her knee and stuff so uh, she was definitely in safe hands but I could just I could just really empathize with that pain and that shock um, of falling over when you're playing and then on my way back actually as I was walking back up my street I um, I saw quite in the distance um, uh, an elderly gentleman who was really struggling with um, some very heavy bags of shopping he had two bags and they were really sort of weighing him down and he was slowly making his way to his front door um which is very close to where where i live um and i just couldn't help but feel just really sad that he'd struggled clearly from all the way from town which is a good sort of 15 20 minute walk and this is you know he was, he was an elderly gentleman um and i just kind of I just really wish that I'd noticed him a bit sooner and maybe I could have helped him with his bags because he just he just looks so tired and you know I started to wonder you know does he live alone you know I do see him quite often actually um I've never really seen him with anybody else um is he lonely you know loneliness is something that affects a lot of people now um so I started to feel quite concerned um yeah so that was my empathy walk and I encourage you all to take one. Thanks so much. Bye.